So real quickly, we're going to see how we can zoom in whenever we aim down our sights and zoom out whenever we're hip firing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our script for our shoot. And we're going to start with variables as usual. This time, why don't we say something like uh, public float, uh, let's say zoom magnitude. This will be how far we zoom in whenever we uh, hold down for our iron sights. And then we're going to do a uh, private variable down here. Let's say private. And we're going to have to get at our camera uh, on our uh, first person character. So we're going to make a type camera. And we'll let's call this FPS camera. I'm going to go back in and change these guys to private. Had it that way earlier. I must have been debugging earlier. And I'm just going to tidy up some of my uh, stuff up here just to make sure it's more readable. There we go. All right, so we have this private variable FPS camera. Now we need to be able to access our FPS camera in our FPS controller. And we'll notice that if we select FPS controller, we have no camera functions. We just got a bunch of random scripts that we've got. But the very the only child within this uh, parent group, FPS person character, that's what we want to get at. We want to get the camera field of view. So to do that, we're going to simply access the component there. So we're going to say FPS camera equals. Then we're going to say transform dot get child zero child, meaning we're going to look at this game object our script's attached to, which is FPS controller, and we're going to find the very first child, child zero, which is our first person character, which happens to have our camera. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, do game object dot get component of type camera. And there we go. Now FPS camera points directly at our camera component on our first person character. And from here, it's just really simple. Now that we have access to our first person camera, whenever we have our mouse right button held down, we're just gonna say FPS camera dot field of view equals zoom magnitude. So as we're holding down our right click, our field of view is gonna change to our zoom magnitude. And else, let's say an else, meaning it's always running, basically, because that's just the way it goes. Let me think about this. So if camera field of view does not equal, and 60 uh, is the magnitude of the uh, field of view that we're going to be running, that's the default field of view value. So if we're not sitting at 60, then we're going to say FPS camera that field of view equals 60. That's just to keep us from uh, constantly running, you know, changing our field of view to 60. So we're looking to see if we're not at 60. And if we're not at 60, then we're going to change our field of view back to 60. All right. So going to our first person controller. Let me collapse some of these scripts right here. And now we have a zoom magnitude right here. Let's set it to something like 40. We'll hit play. And now you'll notice that we zoom in real quickly whenever we aim down our iron sights. Like so. So I'll maximize this and we can get a better look at it. And we're really able to like hone in on our baddies. There we go. All right. So I'm going to call our first person controller shooting scripts done for now. A lot of weird stuff going on with ray casting and quaternions. And a lot of this stuff can be uh, refined. Uh, but for the sake of the class and not getting into too much, uh, not to get into too many topics and uh, delving deep into quaternity, quaternity and vector math. We're just going to kind of leave it as it is. If you want to explore some of this more, maybe add smoother transitions between the zoom, like an interpolation, rather than just this abrupt zoom, you can go and try. 
But for right now, we're calling this gun controller done. So, I think this is going to be the last video for this final project. Uh, I might have a video showing the final product, of which I want you guys to submit. But I've only shown you guys how to set up this gun controller because there's a lot of new stuff that we haven't covered before. The parameters of the rest of the game, you definitely have been exposed to. And the gist of the game, I'll quickly uh, go over it before uh, the next video where I have uh, a small little game example set up for you guys for your final project. Basically, you're going to be walking through a destroyed facility. You're pretty uh, accustomed to some of those assets by now. You're going to make a level. That's populated by turrets that are stationary. And when you enter their field of view, they look at you, target you, and shoot you. Your goal is to go through the destroyed facility, destroy all the turrets, collect a key or a passcode to exit the stage. So things that will be involved with the project will be setting up your gun controller uh, scripts like we've been doing in the last videos. Building out a level, <clears throat> creating a very baseline enemy AI for our stationary turrets to shoot at us. And then we're going to be collecting keys as, a, as an objective to get through instead of just going through blasting something. We'll create like a puzzle like find the red key to get through the red door type uh, of element. So all those things you guys have the skills to do. It'll be your final project, so I'm giving you guys, uh, you know, I have quite a bit to chew off there. So the next video, I'll show an example of everything I just talked about and carefully go over the exact parameters of your final project for the semester. All right. Thanks, guys.